Good afternoon to all of you. Welcome. It's a long time we are meeting at a press conference. We had our Politburo meeting on 25th and 26th, yesterday and the day before. And this is the communique which has been distributed to you. But the first, out, outrightly, we'd like to condemn the manner in which the BJP is now using Yeah, we outrightly condemn the manner in which the BJP has now resorted to using the criminal defamation route to target opposition leaders and to disqualify them as members of parliament or legislatures, as it happened with Sri Rahul Gandhi recently. Now, this comes on top, apart from all the issues connected with the details of that particular case, which are already there in the media. But it, or this is now coming on top of the attacks being mounted by using the central agencies. And the CBI and the ED have become the political arms of the ruling BJP at the center. The, the harassment and intimidation of opposition leaders continues. The latest being Sri Manish Sisodia, who is now still in jail. Ms. Kavita of the BRS, she is being persecuted and harassed. And of course, the family of Mr. Lalu Prasad Yadav and Tejasvi Yadav. All the cases, old cases are being revived. So we strongly denounce this, the Politburo strongly denounces this, and has joined with all the other secular opposition parties in filing a petition before the Supreme Court in order to regulate the detentions and arrests by the ED under the PMLA. And that is now is, is being posted by the Supreme Court and we'll await what will be the judicial verdict. The Adani issue continues to remain alive with more and more exposures, new exposures that are coming. So it's all the more necessary that this must be properly investigated. And a JPC in this must immediately be constituted by the central government. The demand for this is continuing in the parliament. The obdurate refusal by the Prime Minister Modi and the government to answer any questions related to this Adani, uh, Adani companies, expo, group of companies' exposures is itself <clears throat> a vindication of the fact that there is something very, very serious that this government wants to hide. And that is not in the interests of India. And the brazen manner in which such crony capitalism is being patronized and developed and encouraged by the Modi government that has to be not merely exposed, but put an end to. In order to avoid answering questions, it is the ruling party, the BJP and the government, that is stalling the parliament. This has very rarely happened in the past. Yes, we've had occasions in the past where sometimes the ruling party resorts to stalling the parliament, but such a continuous but days on end, disruption of the parliament by the ruling BJP is unheard of and is actually undermining our parliamentary democracy. Even the budget was guillotined and passed in 12 minutes, straight 12 minutes. I mean, much of the time is actually for the minister to read out moving the bills without any discussion. So the parliament as an institution is virtually being paralyzed by the BJP government. And this constitutional institution, attack on constitutional institutions, continues in other spheres as well. The judiciary is under continuous target and is being targeted so that they want greater executive control over judiciary and the judicial appointments. The governors continue to play the role of the 
advancing the agenda of the ruling BJP at the center in the non-BJP rule states. And <clears throat> in this manner, all the institutions, independent institutions under the established by our constitution are being undermined. At the same time, communal polarization is being sharpened. We have seen how the two youth from Rajasthan were burnt alive in the state of Haryana. Now there are reports of increasing attacks on the Christian minorities, particularly the Christian tribals. And the widespread attacks against the Muslim community continue and it has been justified today by the Union Home Minister that the quota for Muslims who are treated as categorized as OBCs by the state governments. These reservations have been cancelled in the state of Karnataka. To treat sections of the Muslim population and, and as OBCs and categorize them as OBCs as the recommendation of the Sachak Committee report. The Ranganath Mishra Committee report endorsed that and said that this has to be done by the states when they enumerate the OBCs in the state. But despite that, they have now cancelled it in the run-up to the election because this, in a way, is the tool that they use for communal polarization. Now this sharpening communal polarization, attack on the institutions, etc., comes also with growing economic burdens on the people. The budget itself is a contractionary budget. That means government expenditures have reduced and this will lead to a further depression of demand in the economy, which will lead to further recessionary trends leading to greater unemployment. And in this situation, the inequalities are doubling, growing rapidly, galloping, while the miseries of the people are growing. And the Politburo noted that there are protest actions that are taking place against the living conditions of the people, attacks on the living conditions of the people, in almost all sections of our population. And <clears throat> the Rega, Manrega, which was the only source of some sort of a livelihood prov prov provider, now that has been virtually being decimated with the introduction of this national mobile monitoring system. And with this app that has to be downloaded onto the smartphones, many Manrega workers have now borrowed money to buy smartphones in order to download this. And nearly 50% of the, of the people who use Manrega for their survival are unable to do that. So along with this linkage with this app, and the budgetary allocations being slashed, the long pending pendency in wage payments, this is virtually destroying the Manrega, which is only the, the lifeline, the lifeline and the backbone for survival for people in rural India. This is a very cruel, callous act that being committed by the Modi government. The Politburo also noted the fact that, thanks to all of you, that is the media projection, that you have been saying that Modi is electorally, or the BJP is electorally invincible. But what is the actual reality? Earlier round of three assembly elections, apart from Gujarat, BJP lost its sitting government in Himachal. It lost the Delhi Municipal Corporation, which, where it, which it controlled for 15 years. And then in the later elections to the, in the Northeast, out of 180 seats in these three states, the BJP won only 46, not 44 as written in the community, but it's 46. And its vote share declined in all the three states. In Meghalaya, it has got only two MLAs, losing deposit in all the other 58 seats it contested. And yet, it is there in government in alliance with these local regional parties. So the invincibility, even in the by-elections, we have seen that in Pune, where it lost its sitting assembly seat, which it held for 15 years, to the Maha 
Aghadi <coughs> and in importantly for us in Sagar Digi in West Bengal, in the assembly by election, a seat that the Trinamul Congress won continuously and last time won by more than 50,000 votes was arrested by the Congress left combination by, and winning the seat by more than 23,000 votes. This is a very significant development. So where people are united and determined to defeat the BJP, this is happening. So it's not sort of an electoral invincibility. And this points the way for the future that the unity of all forces interested and wishing to protect the secular democratic character of the Indian Republic and democracy in the country, that unity will play the major role in the future in shaping Indian politics. Tripura Assembly elections in order to were held in very, very difficult circumstances, but despite that, the left and the Congress uh, seat-sharing understanding that has made a very positive impact and reduced the BJP to a very, very narrow majority of two in the state. But the fact that the BJP could not win the elections in the way it had projected itself to win and it was hoping to win led to the unleashing of a very vicious post electoral violence in the state and more than a thousand incidents of attacks, violen violence, ransacking, arson and destruction of the livelihood instruments of the people, that is rickshaws, auto rickshaws and, and uh, poisoning of the fishing ponds for the fishing people. I mean, these sort of activities, unheard of in a democracy, have, are happening in Tripura. Even a team of members of parliament, seven, a seven-member MP team of the CPI and CPI and the Congress, even that team was attacked by the BJP in the presence of the police in Tripura. That is the state of democracy under BJP. Today in Tripura, yes, people's resistance is there, it will continue. I'm sure that the question of supremacy of democracy to be established in Tripura, that will be the major issue. And uh, Politburo also denounced the personal vilification and targeting of the Chief Minister of Kerala and the LDF government by the BJP. And it's also noted that the Congress Party led UDF in Kerala acts in tandem with the BJP in mounting such attacks against the CPM. But like always in the past, the people of Tripura will give a proper rebuff to all these efforts. <clears throat> Noting the struggles of the peasantry, the Sayyukti Chan Morcha held a very big Mahapachayat here and called for nationwide agitations over corporate control over agriculture. The long march, the third long march took place in Maharashtra from Nasik to Mumbai and even before the march reached Mumbai, the Shinde BJP government in Maharashtra was forced to accept all the demands, announce the acceptance of the demands in the assembly and take the administrative steps of an action for implementation of that. The main issue was that of the onion growers. Onion growers, onion crop was being destroyed by the farmers because they were not getting any price for it. So a bonus of 350 rupees per quintal of onions has been announced. And this is a big relief for lakhs of farmers in Maharashtra. Likewise, the trade unions are up, out on a war path virtually against privatization and attacks on their rights, whether it's the electricity workers, whether it's the state government employees, whether it's the Anganwadi workers or the scheme workers or the midday meal workers, ASHA workers, every one of them is on an agitation and a <coughs> protest mode. In this background, the Politburo decided to extend full support to the Kisan Mazdoor rally that was marched to Parliament on the 5th of April. And we expect lakhs and lakhs of people to converge in that march, demanding from the Parliament that the assurances made to the Kisans 
by the Prime Minister on the minimum support price that they be implemented and to the working class all the assurances of both their rights and their <clears throat> benefits that to be implemented and they will be joined by many other sections including the agricultural labor. So these are the main uh, uh, points of discussion in the Politburo. The Politburo decided the Central Committee will be convened from 27th to 29th of April in Delhi. So this is what I have to brief you about the <coughs> Politburo deliberation.